With everything going on in the economy, from inflation hitting your cash to interest rates rising, it can be really hard to know what to do with your money. Should you invest in short-term savings or should you move your money into long-term investments? Today, we're gonna explore those two options and what you should do. So before we begin, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not personalized investment advice, but we all have similar things that we think about with our money. With inflation hitting our accounts and making our money worth less, and with savings rates not matching inflation, it can be hard to know whether you should save or invest for the long term. First, we're gonna talk about savings and how it can be really important to think about these goals in the short term. If you've been keeping up with the news recently, you may know that inflation rates are very high right now. What that basically means is that your liquid cash is worth less than it was, say, a year ago before inflation really kicked off. You may go to the grocery store and see that things are more expensive and that it costs more money to get the same goods that you did a year ago. But you might also look at savings accounts and see that interest rates are going up. However, interest rates are not matching the rate of inflation, which means your money is still being eaten away by inflation. So with this going on, it may be really tempting to look into investing. But let's talk about why saving is still really important, even during times of high inflation. Let's talk about the short to medium term savings goals that you could be wanting to have liquid cash on hand for. Maybe you want to have enough money on hand to take your dream family vacation, or you want to save up enough money for a down payment on a house, or maybe you already have a house and you want to save up money for a renovation. These things are all really important goals to have and can take anywhere from maybe a few months to a year to five years. But perhaps the most important thing to save for, and it's a term we've all heard before, is an emergency fund. So your emergency fund number is going to be a very personal number to you based on your income, how much you spend in a month, and how much you would spend if you cut out all non-essentials. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in May 2021, the average U.S. salary was around $58,000. So let's use that salary to try and determine what an example of an emergency fund number would be. So let's say after taxes, that person who's making $58,000 takes home $44,000. And then let's say that that person's monthly spending is around $3,000, including non-essentials like entertainment, travel, dining out. If you take those things and then evaluate how much is non-essential spending versus essential spending, maybe that person could determine that their bare minimum spending is closer to $2,000 a month. And that would be for necessities like shelter, food, basic utilities. So with that $2,000 number for a three month emergency fund, that means that person is going to need about $6,000 in savings. If they want to stretch that out farther and make it a six month emergency fund, that means they'll need about $12,000 in savings. So once you have that three to six month emergency fund saved up, you can use it for all kinds of things, usually major expenses that you wouldn't have a normal budget for. So say you lose your job and you need to support yourself for the next few months until you get a new one. Or say you have a major medical emergency or something major happens with your house, like your roof falls in. Having that cash on hand can be really important. And it's even more important that it's liquid so that it's easy to access. If you have that money put away in investments, you could potentially be charged a fee for withdrawing it too early, or it might not have earned enough interest in the stock market or worse yet, it might have even lost value while it's been in the stock market. So having it on hand can be really, really valuable for these kinds of emergencies. All right, so let's say you've got the ball rolling on your savings and getting your emergency fund ready to go, but you don't know where to put your money. So the great thing right now is that savings accounts actually do have higher interest rates than they have in the past couple of years. Now, those rates aren't gonna match the rate of inflation, but they're definitely gonna hedge against inflation and the effect that it has on your money, way more than just keeping your money under your mattress or in a jar at home. So you're going to want a comparison shop and look for the best interest rates that you can get on your money. But you also want to make sure that you're looking for banks that have the kinds of features that you want. One really great feature to look for that is available at a lot of banks is sub accounts. Sub accounts are basically smaller savings accounts underneath your major umbrella savings account that you can break apart into different goals. So you might want to have one sub account for your emergency fund, one for your travel goals, one for your home renovation. Having them separate can make it really easy to organize where your money's going and help you meet those goals that you want to achieve. So having liquid cash on hand in your savings is great, but there is such a thing as saving too much. If you have too much cash on hand, you could be missing out on the long-term gains that could come from investing. So say you want to save up for retirement. If you have your money in the stock market, on average, over a long enough period of time, you'll end up earning probably seven to 8% in a conservative estimate. However, in a savings account, even right now with the best savings rates, you'll earn a maximum of about 3%. So between those two, you can see that there's a pretty big difference between how much you can earn in each vehicle over that long enough period of time. So once you have enough in your savings to meet your emergency fund and some of those short to medium term goals that we discussed, let's say you're ready to invest for the long term and you want to start saving up for retirement or for a big fund like your kid's college education. 
So we actually have a whole video about how passive investing can help you achieve those goals and basically set you up with a set it to forget it kind of plan that allows you to save and invest in the long term. And this kind of strategy allows you to diversify the kind of investments that you're making and you pay low or no fees compared to more active day trading. So just like it's possible to have too much in savings, it's also possible to have too much in investing. Let's say something happens and you don't have an emergency fund on hand, but you do have a lot of cash in your investments. If you want to withdraw from, say, your retirement account, you could do that, but it might be a 10% penalty fee to do so. Let's say you don't want to tap into your investments and you end up going into debt instead, like getting a credit card or maybe diving into a personal loan or getting a second mortgage on your house. These options are valid, but they're going to be so much more expensive than just having liquid savings on hand. Saving and investing are two sides of the same coin for meeting your financial goals. You might want to just look at your goals and figure out when you want to achieve them. Is it something short term, medium term, long term? Those kinds of decisions are going to help you decide where you want to put your money at any given moment. And the best option is to diversify. So even though you do want liquid cash on hand in case you have an emergency, it's also really important to invest for the future. So when you're looking at your options, make sure that you research everything that's available to you, how quickly you want to access your money, whether you want it to have high interest or maybe just be accessible and on hand, but maybe look, the interest isn't as great as if you're investing. There are so many ways you can mix and match these kinds of tools to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So just make sure that you take your financial future in your hands and look at what's available to you. I'm Chanel Bissette, and I'm a banking writer with NerdWallet. We have lots of resources, including a compound interest calculator that can help you compare how much you'll earn at different interest rates on your money. Like this video if you learned something and don't forget to subscribe.